All right, guys, uh, today we're going to be doing a pretty difficult problem, showing how to do one of these more difficult problems with projectile motions. Uh, so let's go into it. It is the middle of the night. You're standing on a horizontal distance of 14 meters from the high fence that surrounds the estate of your lovely boyfriend. Let me just underline some things. The top of the fence is five meters above the ground. You have taped an important message to the rock that you want to throw over the fence. You throw the rock from a height of 1.6 meters above the ground at an angle of 44 degrees above the horizontal. Okay, hold on, sorry. A few key pieces of information. Okay. Uh, in order to clear the top of the fence, what must be the minimum initial speed of the rock as it leaves your hand? Okay, so this problem is going to take a while, so... Let me kind of draw out the important things. So we are 14 meters away from this high fence. The fence is a height of five meters high. Okay, this is definitely not to scale. And this rock uh, is being thrown from a height. Let me go like this. So it's being thrown from a height of 1.6 meters. And then the angle here is 44 degrees. Okay, so we want this to barely make it over. Okay, uh, so what is the minimum speed? So we're looking for this initial velocity. All right, so let's get to it. What do we know? Again, we're going to start out with everything we know in the x and the y direction. And as always, starting out with acceleration. Okay, um, good. Now we know that this rock needs to travel in the x direction, a distance of 14 meters. And in the y direction, uh, it needs to go 5 minus 1.6 meters. So that's going to be 3.4 meters. The reason for that is it starts right here, 1.6 meters above the ground, and it needs to, when it gets to this 14 meter mark, it needs to be 3.4 meters above the point it was thrown. Okay, so the displacement from the point it was thrown, it needs to go over here, which is going to be a total of 3.4 meters. Okay, great. Um, and I think that's, that's all we know. And the problem that you see is that we only have two pieces of information on the X side and the Y side. And it's hard to really do anything with two pieces of information when we know with kinematic equations. So there's a few things we should also know. First is that we should know that the time it takes to travel this 14 meters and to be displaced 3.4 meters is going to be the same. Okay, so we should know the time is going to be the same. We should also know that the initial velocity is somewhat going to be the same. So we should know that the velocity initial in the y direction is going to be equal to v initial times this angle here. So this side right here. So time sine of 44. So I hope that makes sense. We don't know what v initial is, but we know that v initial y is going to be v initial times sine of 44. Same with the, uh, the velocity in the x direction is going to be v initial, but it's going to be this side here, which is going to be cosine of 44. Okay. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, what we're going to do is, what we should know is when we have uh, an equation, and we have two unknowns, we can use two equations to kind of solve for those two, two things. So I'm gonna let me use a different color now. Do, 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 do this. So I should have I should know this formula uh, that the displacement of x equals vxt plus one half axt squared. Um, and that's going to, and we know that acceleration in the x direction is zero. So this is just going to be displacement in the x is equal to uh, velocity initial times cosine of 44. And then this is just a zero over here. Okay. Oh, and then we have, don't forget the t, times t. Okay. Um, good. And now let me do the same thing with the y. 
doing a different color though. I'll do this color. So displacement in the y is equal to v initial y times t plus one half a y t squared. Okay, so let's see what this will look like. Displacement in the y is equal to initial velocity, which is velocity initial times sine of 44 times t plus one half negative 10 t squared. Okay, so now what we have uh, in these, oops, oh, sorry, I, can, I should get rid of this displacement in the y because we already know what that is. That is 3.4. And we know what that displacement in the x is going to be equal. So let me put that displacement in the x is equal to 14 meters. So now when we look at these two equations here, we can see that we have two unknowns, v initial and time and v initial and time. So what we can do is wh whenever we don't have, two, when we have two unknowns, but we have two equations, we can substitute for each other to solve for uh, what this all is. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute for time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this whole thing. Oops, maybe I'll, no, uh, I'll put the, I'm going to put this, whoops, sorry. I'm going to put this whole thing on to the other side. So I have. 14 divided by initial velocity times cosine of 44 uh, is equal to t. Okay, hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is this t, I know that it's equal to this. So I'm going to put that over here. And I'm going to put that over there substituting in the time. Okay, so let me change uh, my color again. Okay, so I have now 3.4 is equal to initial velocity times sine of 44 times t, which is 14 divided by v initial cosine of 44. Okay, so now I substituted that t. Now let me substitute the other t plus one half negative t, t squared. So this is a little bit com confusing. We have to square everything in this situation. So we have uh, 14 squared divided by v initial squared times cosine squared 44. Okay. So everything is squared. Uh, that's how it does mathematically. A lot of times students don't really know how to do that mathematically, but that's how it goes. And let's see if we can simplify some things. So um, one thing that we should be able to simplify right away is this V initial sine 40, uh, 44 divided by V initial cosine 44. Uh, that's going to be tan 44. So sine over cosine is tan. We should know that. But anyway, we could kind of just like calculate this all out. So I'm going to put 3.44 is equal to V initial. And then I'm just going to put something. So I'm going to, in my calculator, I'm going to do sine of 44 uh, times 14. Then I'm going to do divided by uh, ch -ch -ch cosine of 44. Okay. So what I actually get is, sorry, this V initial here cancels out because one's in the numerator, one's in the denominator. And then I just have a numerical value here. I have 13.52, 13.52. So now I'm gonna put this other side of the equation. Let me like, I'm gonna try to simplify something. So I'm gonna do plus one half times negative 10. So I'm gonna just do minus five. And then let me just kind of write some things out. 14 squared, I'll simplify this further later. 14 squared is 196 divided by uh, v initial squared times cosine of 44 and squared of that is going to be 0.52. Okay. So let me simplify further. Okay. 3.4. So I'm going to bring this to the other side. So 3.4 minus 13.52. 3.4 minus 13.52. It's going to equal negative 10.12. And this is going to be equal to, 
I'm going to simplify further here. I'm going to do negative 5 uh, times 196. Then I'm going to divide that by 0.52. Divide by 0.52. And then I get negative, big number here, negative 1,884.62 uh, divided by V initial squared. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of algebra, put V initial to the other side. So I'm going to do V initial is equal to, uh, and to find out the square root, which is going to be the, I'm going to bring 10.12 to the other side, negative, so the negatives cancel out. 1884.62 divided by 10.12, and let's see what that is. Negative 10.12. And we get 13.65 meters per second. Woo! That was a lot. Watch it back if it was confusing. It's, it is a lot. It's a hard problem. But this is, you know, this is just an example of a tough projectile motion problem.